Well, today we are headed to Farmington Station to look at the Station Park Mall, a little bit of Lagoon, and then uh, just some parts of the neighborhood in Farmington. So on my way there now, I'm going to head near the Layton Station and then begin on the bike path that goes to Farmington, which I showed the other day in a video. But uh, that's the shorter leg of the trip. It's probably about a 30 minute ride as opposed to going all the way to downtown Salt Lake City. station. That's where you can take the train to go to Farmington, Woods Cross, Salt Lake City, and then several other cities going in either direction. There's also a trolley that takes you to and from the city. And there's Cafe Sabor. I'm sure I'm pronouncing it wrong. So the other day, if you watched the video where we rode bicycles from Layton to downtown Salt Lake City, I'm going to be approaching the start of that path in about, I don't know, maybe three or four minutes from here. This little video here will give you a glimpse of how you get to the trail from the Layton Station. Once you climb that little hill there, the rest of this is downhill. always construction going on in parts of Utah. Wouldn't surprise me if it's more and more housing. So there is a bike lane in the street too, but these sidewalks are very smooth. Waited for the walk sign to come on. We'll just need to cross at the next intersection to basically make a diagonal across the street. Once I show the entrance to where I started the other day, I probably will only record just a couple of brief clips of the ride so that I can save the bulk of the rest of the footage for the new stuff at Farmington.
All right, so that was a quick intersection on this one. I only had to pause the video for about five seconds. Okay, so the light changed. And now we're going to be making a right turn take advantage of this shade here while I can. Right now it's, uh, at least when I left, it was about 72 degrees, but it's in about an hour or so, probably be up to 80 degrees and then later on up to the 90s again. So hopefully we can get in most of this action while we're still in the 80s. Coming up here, we're going to make a left turn, and it's going to be a small part of the trail that I didn't show the other day, but it was actually, I rode it on the way back because we had taken the train, so we had to ride this path to get back to the car to load up the bikes. It was actually a pretty cool part of the trail because it's intermixed between the houses. And of course, you can never complain about parts of a trail that have shade on it. tiny hill here. Look at this, you're pretty much in this person's backyard. Looks like we have a sprinkler system coming out. Alright, so this across the street there is where I started the video the other day of the bike path. This is where we had parked the vehicle and unloaded the bikes and started things off. So that should give you some familiar ground as to where we're at. So like I said, I'll, as soon as I start on the trail up here, I'm going to go ahead and stop the video and the next longer clip should be as I'm approaching Farmington. I know I said the next clip would be till Farmington, but I just started it up again. I mean, come on, look at this. There's a basketball court there. You could use it as a mini soccer field, a trampoline in the ground. Pool is not open right now, but that's all part of the same one house. This is why the path to Farmington from Layton is nice because there's at least a couple of spots that have shade like this. Once you get past Farmington or even close to Farmington, it's all bright sunshine, which wouldn't be so bad in cooler weather. But in hot 90 degree weather, when the sun's just beating down on you, you're gonna get either a sunburn or just too hot and sweaty. Although I'm sure there's probably certain long sleeve clothing that's both cool and prevents the sun from burning you. Something I should probably look into. Alright, just about one mile away from Farmington Station now. Probably can't see it on the phone. I can see some of the stores from here, and then I might be able to see the tall lagoon roller coaster in the background. And you can definitely see the mountains. <laughs> Here's the end of that SNS 
railroad train station I was talking about the other day at the museum. Although I'm unclear the status of it, because it looks like it's very well kept. And there are a couple of cars in the parking lot, but when I look online, there's no website for it. And the Google listing for it says permanently closed. And I did read one review of somebody that said it closed back in uh, 2016 or 17. But like I said, it's strange. It does say SNS Railroad Park and Museum Public Welcome. You would think they would have taken the sign down if it's not open. But I also couldn't find any information online. I mean, if I maybe after I get to Farmington and I shoot my footage, I'll try to do a little more research. If I find out that they're open, I'll consider uh, stopping by just to see what it is but right now I'm thinking that they're closed all right and now you can see a little bit more of station park there and I'm timing this timing this up pretty good because all the stores there open at 10 a.m. and right now it's probably like 9 55 a.m. or so otherwise if the stores are open earlier I would have come out and ridden when the temperature was cooler at like 6 a.m. in the morning but if I would have ridden at 6 a.m. then gotten here at 7 a.m. nothing would have been open for another three hours so it would have been a little bit weird showing uh, you know all the stores closed. I kind of want to show the activity. all the cows enjoying the grassland. There we go, Farmington, established 1847. So I'm going to try to get around to the front part. And then start filming from there. Well, it's a hot one making my way to the front of Farmington now. Uh, the bike path area took me in near the side, but once I get near the front, I'll pull out my gimbal and probably get ready to start recording without the charger being in. Hopefully that takes me uh, enough through Farmington. And then after that, the ideal plan is to go over a bridge and then I have to decide whether I want to show the outside of the Lagoon Amusement Park first or the nearby neighborhood. But we'll uh, do that after Station Park. All right, we're here. Welcome to Station Park in Farmington, Utah. This is one of the bigger and more popular shopping areas. You can pan around. You can see you've got a Chick-fil-A over there. Behind the Chick-fil-A in the background would be the Front Runner train station. So earlier in this video you saw the Layton station. So if you weren't bike riding, you could bike ride directly from that Layton station to the uh, station over here and go shopping. It looks like there's a little bit of construction going on here. I'm not sure what new building that will be. If you're taking a car in there's multiple ways to get in but this is one of the ways so let's begin our tour I like the middle section of uh, Farmington Station the best but first I'm going to go over toward this right side and just show some of the food places that they have available Wait for the traffic to clear. This is a circle intersection. I forgot exactly what the term is for a circular intersection, but it makes it easy to know traffic's only going one way. So on the right here is the Habit Burger and Grill. From what I've read online, they serve 
exactly what it says. Burgers and fries and things along those lines. You've got Jared jewel, Jewelry Store, T-Mobile. Darn it, and see, today was T-Mobile Tuesdays. Sometimes uh, there's giveaways where it says, oh, visit a T-Mobile store and get some item for free. I just checked the app like five minutes before I started this video, and there was nothing, uh, nothing free today. Edible arrangements. Sounds good. I assume they serve pastries in there. And you've got Starbucks coffee. Just outside of Station Park, there are a few restaurants. Cabela's. Actually, it's not a restaurant. That's for a hunting and fishing store. But I know there's other restaurants uh, beyond that. And a McDonald's and a few other places. Across the way there is Noodles and Company. So some to go pasta dishes or you could eat them inside. Next to that you've got a Modern Asia Cafe and Blue Lemon. Venture X, the future of workspace. So I'm not sure if that has furniture, and office setup examples related to you know, more modern office space designs. That's just my guess. Way in the background, you've got University of Utah Health Center. So you can get health services there. I believe it's a big center for the public to go in. Not quite a hospital, but receive certain health services. There's Blaze Pizza. Good Feet, Everbowl, and Slapfish. All right, and then the rest of the stuff over here is either that Utah Health Center or parking. So now let's venture on back to this area. Got a Barnes and Noble. And we'll cut through this little part here. It says Hyatt Place up there. I don't know if that is a hotel, that would be my guess, or if there's actually permanent, like condos and residences. Up here, it sounds like we've got Tucano's Brazilian Grill. Forgive any pronunciations that I'm butchering. A glimpse of Barnes and Noble with a mini Starbucks inside of it. So that's <laughs> two Starbucks areas in the close vicinity. So even though the Station Park stores opened at 10 a.m. when I got here at 10, right on the money at 10 a.m., there was tons of cars everywhere. So I have a feeling like the food places and other things open sooner. So that's for, for perspective where I started the video. And now we're at the area that I enjoy walking around. You've got the Old Navy store there. Columbia store here. Over on the left side, over there, there's some store called Athleta. I assume that's related to athletes. There's also a store called Tricked Out Accessories. 
I'm gonna backtrack a little bit though because I want to showcase this street first. I always like uh, shopping complexes that have plenty of pedestrian sidewalks with nice mix of flowers and even though cars can drive through this area it's not uh, heavily trafficked because there's not too many parking spaces most people will park in the main lots and then walk over there's the build a bear workshop established 1997 T's memory something called typo even though it's spelled correctly <laughs> cotton on so a lot of these some of these stores I've heard of but something like cotton on I've never heard of before It's sugar. Mm. Keep me away from there. <laughs> I'd be addicted. I wonder if they sell cookies and what else they have. Some of these places I may try to pop in after I do the main tour. Either just to look around or not sure if I'll do any videos inside the stores. Buckle B. I think that's what it is, unless it's Buckle 8. <laughs> Pink, that must be one of the Victoria's Secret stores. Yeah, I'm not sure. I've seen before there's some that are Victoria's Secret and some that are branded pink. I'm not sure if there's a difference between the two. Over there you've got Cotton On, but the kids version. Lone Pro. Let's go ahead and cross over here. There you go, the sign does say Victoria's Secret up there. Forgive the construction noise. Here's one of my favorite spots. The fountain and center part of Station Park. We can walk over this little bridge here, see more of the fountain. I don't know if they do it during the daytime, but when I've been here in the evening before or nighttime, the, the water actually does like a little show and plays along with music and lights. You can see some of the lights are on. Not sure if it comes through on the video, but for the true lighting experience, you need to see it at nighttime. Rooster's Gourmet Popcorn. There's also Fountain Square Eats and Treats. So that's what this fountain area is called, Fountain Square. Thank you. 
In between here, you've got the, looks like some type of pavilion. I don't know if that's just to provide shaded seating or if there's some type of shows that often go on there. Over there, you've got Sephora, some more food places across the way, Johnny Rockets, a restaurant, Cecilia Mia, I think. Can't see from the tree. Oh, there it is, yeah, Cecilia Mia. Then Cinemark. So if you want to grab a movie, you can do so. P.F. Chang's. There's a little jungle gym over there. And then right now the fountains have briefly gotten quiet. Let's see if I can pause this video and get a perspective from the other way. There you go. Nice shot. The water in the background. The whole area is nice. I know my face is kind of dark here, but let's turn it back around and continue the tour after watching the fountain just for just a little bit more. Let's see here. Let's try to pan up a little bit. That's the top of the building. So there is, I guess, in the middle part, there are twigs. I think it says twigs. Bistro and martini bar. I missed it earlier, but above the eats and treats thing there in the background, you see there's a Vans shoe store. And now let's walk on over this way to see what other stores we have. So you've got an Apple store over there. I think I missed it from the tree. Yep, you can see it a little bit there, the Apple Store, just behind that American flag. There's the Johnny Rockets I mentioned earlier. Down East, another clothing store. Place here called Hope Avenue. Not sure what that is, but it's safe to assume it's clothing related. As you wish, pottery painting place. So it looks kind of kid friendly inside. This is Janella Bay, Journeys. Across the street, that sounds like my type of store. Tetan or Tetan Toys. Tetan, I don't know how to pronounce it. Carhartt. Not sure if there's anything more this way. I know there's more parking, but that might be the extent of it for that way. Now if you go all the way over there, you have Sally, Petco, looks like a nail store, famous footwear. Maurice's. I know there's a Nike store over there somewhere. 
Oh, I'm missing some of the toys. Here's that Tatton toy store. Got some balls, little horsies, fun and joke center toys, the old Tonka trucks. Various Lego displays. Oh, there's the popular guy. The, uh, from Star Wars, the mini one. The mini Yoda, baby Yoda. Harmon's Neighborhood Grocery Store. That tower in the background is of Lagoon Amusement Park. Waxing the city. The joint chiropractor. Some place called Bucked Up. Another clothing store. This looks like if you want to get restaurants, you can pop inside there for a second. So next to Harmon's, there's something called America First, and then a post office, and then the Nike store. Next to the Nike store, REI Co-op. Ross Dress for Less. Over here we've got Forever 21. H&M. And back across the street over there. Next to Ross is Home Good. Alta. Marshalls. There's a Best Buy, one of the few electronic stores still remaining. And then next to Best Buy is Nordstrom Rack. We'll have to wait for the traffic to clear here. I think that's where the Apple store was. This is the AT&T store. Cost Plus World Market. I'm not quite sure what type of store it is, but I'm going to assume it's like a furniture store based on the type of sign here that shows a chair and lighting and candles. Over there we've got a Verizon store. Fresh Mexican Grill, a Subway, Costa Vida, and Cafe Zupas. So we're actually making our way back to where we started. I mean, it seems like a pretty quick tour, but of course it's going to go quick when you're not actually stopping in the stores themselves. So yes, I paused the video briefly while I was crossing the street there. We're back to the front. Now let's do just a little walk here. Instead of going to the right of the Columbia store this time, we'll go to the left side. And then wrap things up.
Old Navy, up to 75% off clearance, no way. <laughs> So the tricked out accessory store looks like it's related to phone case uh, accessories and other tablet accessories. I'm not sure what that store even is there. GMRT. Athlena, so yeah, it looks like maybe athletic clothes for women, I think. The bicycle I was riding is actually parked just above that bush there by the flag. So it was nice that they have a bike rack here. But here's a couple of the stores we didn't get to cover. Bath Body or Bath and Body Works. Forever 21. I think we saw that on the other side, so they may have entrances on both sides. J. Joe. American Eagle Outfitters. They usually have a nice selection of clothing. Brighton. That one looks like it has more purses and bags. This store here is Every now we're making our way back to the middle of Station Park, the fountain area. I'm curious what's in these eats and treats places. So yeah, I'll see if I pop into a few of these stores, if it's worth taking any small clips that I mesh together. And then after I'm done with Station Park, still stay tuned to the rest of this video because I'm going to show uh, parts of the outside of Lagoon, uh, some of the neighborhood in Farmington, including a cafe that I uh, had stopped by yesterday as well as maybe another part of a small bike trail, although I'm not sure how far the trail actually goes. That wraps up the Station Park tour. Hope you enjoyed it, and as always, I have to compare it to Crocker Park in Cleveland. That's always my baseline barometer, but I like setups that are like this, this and exploring them in other cities. So we're inside one of these places. I found out that the eats and treats across the street, there's no more food places in it. So those, there used to be like a Farmington Frankfurters. So that's closed. But over here on this side, we've still got two different stores. FVZ or FZ Drinks. And then there's also a place called Waffled. So, and it's nice and air conditioned in here. So if you need to grab a quick bite. Looks like they serve waffles and ice cream cones over there. As soon as they came out, they started playing the music and the, sh the actual light show.
So this is the Teflon, Tatan, sorry, I forgot the name already, toy store. Hatch a dinosaur egg. Oh no, they're already hatched. Ah! <laughs> Got all the popular board games, Mousetrap, Perfection, Battleship, Clue, Sorry, oh, Operation with Star Wars, Game of Life, Monopoly, Shoots and Ladders. This has got to be the classic section. Those are all the ones I would play as a kid. Clue, the Seinfeld version. Monopoly for sore losers. <laughs> Oh, there we go. Backgammon. Go fish. You can make various, I think these are like marble runs. You construct a little maze for the marble. And have it one. And then some dinosaur related things on this side. If you like playing arcade games, you got your mini Frogger or even the tinier Tetris games. Like, can you actually play on this thing? I guess you can. It says three AAA batteries. Playing Pac Man on the tiny screen. What's that down there? Looks like driver uh, license plates for all 50 states. Poker chips and then various card games. More board games on this side. Oh, look at the sloth up there. Yeti and my spaghetti. <laughs> oh, there you go. Ticket to ride. I actually got the New York one. I don't think they have it here. But I played that earlier this year, and that was pretty fun. We got Ticket to Ride London. And then more of the European ones that are probably longer games. Catan, I have it. I still haven't tried it out yet. Well, they do have them, the hex bug sets. Well, not necessarily the bug parts, but the courses that the hex place make. Vex Robotics. Battlebots. I think we, oh, there's the one, this is the one I built. Or something similar to that. It looks like a slightly different model with the sticker. Hexbug Nanos, there's the important batteries. <laughs> can play soccer with them. And these look like the actual hex bugs or vehicles. Let's see what was on this other side. Some of those little hover drones. A little bit of small little toy vehicles. Always fun to see small caricatures of animals. Play-Doh. We're at Jigsaw Puzzles now. It seems like they have some type of brand called Ravensburger Puzzles. 
quite a bit of them. This one looks kind of cool. I'm not sure what, but just a fake city. But I like ones that have cartoon characters in them. Almost looks like the Thomas Kincaid bat. I don't know if it is. City maps. Oh, oh, I was looking for creative city map ones like this. I've never seen this one online of New York City. Let's see if we can make out everything. Got the Bronx, uh, Statue of Liberty, so Staten Island, Brooklyn, Queens, and then Manhattan. The only thing I don't like is that they seem to have a lot of orange in the ground in Manhattan. Probably did that just because gray color gray wouldn't look right. There's Central Park. The only other city map one I see is Paris. Oh, and these are some 3D puzzles. So they have the Statue of Liberty and other landmarks. Top shelf they have these bigger plush animals like the dog or the zebra down there. So even more puzzles on this side. You even have a Super Mario Odyssey puzzle. I like this one, The Simpsons. 1,000 pieces, that'd be fun to put together just to see all the characters. I did have uh, this brand of puzzle, I believe I got for New York City. I don't see the New York City one here, but they have the Brooklyn Bridge one. And then they actually have, I didn't know they made this many, but Toward the right side here, they have a lot of Utah related ones like Salt Lake City, you can see Temple Square and some other areas, and then just the general Best of Utah. I think they have that one repeated down here, Best of Utah and Park City during the summertime and Park City during the winter time. There's all these bigger sized toy vehicles. Over here we've got a lot more of those caricatures. Not necessarily animals, some are, like the dinosaurs up there. The other ones are more of the fantasy type of scene. And then you've got a ton of Legos, about two or three aisles worth of Legos. Even the Super Mario ones, I usually don't see those in the store. Minecraft, Jurassic World. And then there were some Hot Wheel vehicles over here. Hot Wheels with the Super Mario characters as well. The Play Mobile brand is mixed in. There's a USA puzzle. Amusement parks. These look to be the Marvel and Batman ones. A little bit of Star Wars, Harry Potter. And this is just a Lego creator set where you can make your little vehicles or toys or just general Lego blocks in general. Ah, this is what I was looking for the architecture. So you can make the White House, 
Empire State Building, Tokyo, Dubai, Paris, San Francisco, London, New York City one. few vehicles over there and then some Disney related ones this is kind of funny like the world's smallest is the brand so you got the world's smallest 8 ball world's smallest Lincoln Logs Tinker Toy Potato Head etc world's smallest game of Scrabble how the heck would you play that? <laughs> World's smallest etch a sketch. Rubik's Cube. So they've got a little bit of everything in the store. I mean, I think even an uh, adult who still feels like a kid would be entertained. Oh, let's see if they've got Chris. What? How do you skip? Oh, there it is. Christopher. I was missing it. <laughs> I was saying, where do you go from Christina? It's <laughs> pretty fun in there. In case I butchered the pronunciation earlier, Tatan Toys. I think I got it. <laughs> if not, sorry to the store. But yeah, that was uh, fun looking in there. Uh, don't think I'm really going to go in the clothing related stores that are here because. You know what's there to sh obviously you could look at clothing at every single store but that is less interesting for video I may try to pop over to the candy store in a second just to see what they have to offer I believe it was called it's sugar so let's candy check that out. candy candy because oh, too tempting <laughs> Sour Patch Kids, oh no, a giant sized Oreo, <laughs> a pillow shaped like an Oreo, I'd be munching on that at night time. I like the humor here, approved by the CDC Chocolate Diet Club, or the Dysfunctional Family Survival Bar. My guilty pleasure, the milk chocolate malted milk balls and all the various flavors of them. What do we have over here? Reese's Cups, Hershey Kisses. Hmm. I do need some fresh Jolly Ranchers. Some rules, you gotta take a pair of disposable gloves, put them on your hand. Select your candy, use the tongs and scoop, and there's the prices. Jelly beans. I don't eat jelly beans, but it's still cool to see the big display. Some cotton candy, pre-packaged, gummy breakfast. <laughs> And then some more sour candy or Pez Heads. Pac-Man. We actually have Duff Beer from The Simpsons. <laughs> Let's see, what should I get? Oh, those are the Reese's Pieces. Are there M&M's? Yeah, there's the M&M's. Plain M&M's, caramel, peanut butter. All right, so now I'm leaving Farmington Station taking the bike path or well, not really a path but we're going to take this road over there there should be a bridge I'll be crossing over to the other side of the street once I get to that bridge there's a uh, pedestrian slash bicycle walkway that I can go on to cross the bridge safely I'm across the street now. Over there is Farmington Station. I noticed across the street is the Davis Justice Center. 
Davis is the county that both Farmington and Layton are in. I'm not sure how many, how many other cities are in it. Now we're approaching the bridge along with the bicycle lane. Oh, interesting it looks like there's a bike path down there I think that might be a different version of the path I rode the other day like one that eventually would merge with the thing that I took it says no winter maintenance and it looks like a part of it for two or three sections is out right there but otherwise you could take that bike path You can see the Lagoon Amusement Park over there. One of the highways that would take you to downtown Salt Lake City that way. I thought somewhere over here there was a bridge just for pedestrians. Yeah, this looks like it coming up here. So the street gets too narrow, but you can come over here. And then we've got the overpass. Let's stop here for a second. So right down there, probably too loud to hear me, but that's where Lagoon's parking lot entrance would be. So we'll, we'll go ahead and look at a bit of Lagoon first. I think this car is stopping for me. <laughs> All right. So now we're beginning on a bit of a trail here. I've only looked at this on Google Maps, but you can't see the whole trail. You can only see from a distance on the street level. Looks like a little puddle over here from the creek. Okay. So that was a short part of the trail. I believe the trail continues across the street. Let me pause this and focus on traffic for a second. And there you go, Lagoon. That's probably the best picture of a sign in the park. There you go, Lagoon from a distance. I know the most popular roller coasters over there on the left. You've also got the big wheel, the ride, it's a, I think they call it the rocket, but it's more of a similar to Power Tower if you've been to Cedar Point. 
This ride here in front of us is the roller coaster ride. It's literally called roller coaster. I believe it opened in 1921, so this is the 100 year anniversary. It's a wooden coaster, it kind of jerks you around. And then, let's see, you can see, you can see roller coaster going down the hill there. There's a green roller coaster there called Wicked, and then behind that, there's one called. Mm, God, I'm gonna forget if it's Cannibal or if that's a different ride called Cannibal. But it's a nice, fun park. I don't know if I'll go to it uh, the rest of this trip because it's going to be hot weather. But I think admission is about $65. All right, I just left Lagoon. Now I'm going on a little bit more of the trail, which I think will take me to the neighborhood area I wanted to go to. This is the Lagoon campground. You can see the roller coaster still in the background. So we actually get a somewhat closer view here so there's a bicycle trail that surrounds the amusement park right now i think i'm just going to take a short part of the trail rather than backtracking this will take me a little bit closer to the cafe that i wanted to show from yesterday it was a cute little cafe and perfect for breakfast or brunch One thing that keeps hitting me several times when I ride the bike is dragonflies. They seem to like to run into my hat. Wonder if this bridge here crosses the creek. Yep. At least on that side it does, and over there. Hmm. A little bit of overgrowth here, I'd say. Trying to go uphill. Almost there. I'd go a little faster, but still using one hand. Uh, Hold the camera up. Alright, so the trail would continue to the left, but I think I'm going to go over this way to look look All at right, the neighborhood. It's good to be back in the shade, even though I spent a while in some of those stores, the sun is getting hot. But now we're in more of a neighborhood of Farmington, so let's uh, turn the camera around and look at the Sometimes it's calming just to look at a nice, normal neighborhood. I don't know how it would be to live in, but the outside of that house there with the stones looks nice. I don't know how far exactly it is, but I think on Google Maps, if I went that way toward you know, a couple blocks, you would see things like City Hall in Farmington and maybe a library. Parks and Recreation Building. In fact, it looks like uh, one of the parks. It might be the Parks and Recreation Building down there. Getting closer to the mountain, too. Sometimes it just creeps up on you. You know, you normally in Utah you're surrounded by it the entire time, but not quite as close as I am now. The slogan they have on the signs is "Faith, Family, and Freedom." Wait for this car to turn in to the Wells Fargo Bank.
the street that I wanted to go on is the next intersection here. I'm going to make a left. Let's see, what building is that across the street there? Can't quite make it out with my glasses. Davis County. Not sure. Oh, courthouse. So it looks like you're building a Davis County courthouse over there, or it's under renovation. All right, there's our cross sign. And then we'll make a left right here. Got Francisco's Mexican Grill. Welcome to Davis School District, so that must be the school district building. Not sure if this is just a house here. Uh, but here's a really cute place. Let me try to go in the curb lane of the street. Cafe Torino. So they have a nice outdoor patio both on the front and the back. Inside was a cute little place too, and then they sold espresso, crepes, pastry, and panini. I think there might be another restaurant across the street there. Got a chiropractor, U Haul station. Trying to decide if I should dare. Nope, <laughs> look at that hill. <laughs> I probably don't want to get stuck over there. Oh, here's Farmington City Hall. Maybe this is an older city hall. I don't remember seeing that on the map here. Oh, Farmington Historical Museum. Open Wednesdays, 1 to 4 p.m. imagine having the houses way up there on the mountains and this isn't just a unique spot here I if you go to the mountains anywhere in Utah you're going to see houses that are up there and those will be like the probably the multi-million dollar properties I don't think I would actually enjoy it up there because you know, like right now, you're stuck in nothing but sunlight. I guess you're secluded and private. and But I feel like a lot of these homes down here are, or in other areas of Utah are just as big and you're closer to uh, shops and other things like that. I'm going to go ahead and check out Google Google Maps and see if there's anywhere else I want to explore next, whether it be part of the trail or if I do happen to venture a tiny bit closer to the mountains. All right, so I have my next game plan. That's the end of the Lagoon Trail, so I didn't go through it quite all the way. But we've got a little deviation from the end of the Lagoon Trail going down here and then it should kind of transform into the Farmington Creek Trail. So let's see if we can find that. I believe
believe it should be just on the right side here. Yes, here we go, Farmington Creek Trail. I think they're both synonymous with each other. I mean, technically by Lagoon, it's still the Lagoon Trail. And over here, it's the Farmington Creek Trail, but either one, you're pretty much on the same trail. So this should be a slight uphill climb. I ran on Google Maps, it was about 256 feet upward for about a mile. There's the creek. Looks like there must be multiple access paths. And actually it looks like we're back by the part of the lagoon campground. So we'll see if I'm going the right direction or not. I may have to check Google Maps at some point. Although as long as I make a left up here, I think that'll be the right direction. So my final planned destination for today's videos in Farmington is something I saw on the map called Bigfoot. <laughs> so it's supposed to be a statue of Bigfoot. So it should be about a mile on this trail and then there's like a Farmington pond or something and I believe it's you have to weave a little bit in and out, and it's just past that. It's much cooler going through a trail like this when you've got the shade mixed in. That's one of the things too about hiking. If you hike and you actually get to the part where you're in the mountains amidst all the tree coverage, it's going to be significantly cooler on a day like today. Although when you do have a 90 plus degree day, significantly cooler just means maybe it'll feel like the 80s instead. Okay, so here I'm going to pause and see right, where, I'm according to, to the map, this is the right direction. I think this is just to prevent vehicles from going through. There might have been a, a path going up the hill that leads you back down. Here's the uphill climb of the trail. Looks like we've got a, I don't know if it's a small cemetery or not. All right, let's check again, see if this is the right spot. It's not a cemetery, by the way, it's just a park. Does the trail continue over here? Maybe this is just to prevent cars from accessing it. All right, so yeah, that was part of the correct trail still. Just want to make sure, don't want to, don't want to end up in the wrong spot. And I'm going to use my judgment and walk up this part of the hill instead. No sense in exerting myself more than I need to, especially on a hot day. Okay, so I came to see Bigfoot, but to my surprise, look what we have in the background here. The Farmington Pond is a lot bigger than I thought it was. Nice big pond, you've got people swimming in it.
pond is on the left side. Trail continues on the right here. Let's see if we can get a little bit closer. <laughs> if I had a little bit of experience swimming, it'd be tempting to jump in. Got some nice picnic tables off to the right side that are in the shade. Alright, see example of a picnic table over there. Now this is the part where it's going to be somewhat of a mystery trying to find Bigfoot. It should be nearby. Just mixed in a couple of areas. Don't have the strength to push uphill with one hand. That's the hill I just climbed. See, I wasn't even trying to, and I ended up getting closer to the mountains. That path, the dirt path. Well, let's see where the trail portion continues. And of course it's going more uphill. I know I'm not the in the best of shape, but even to walk that hill, just walking it was uh, pretty exerting. So let's see if I can make it up this smaller hill. Okay, hopefully that was it for the hills. Still not quite sure which direction is the best way to go, but... At least, I know this general direction takes me the right area. A little bit bumpy. Beautiful view of the lower part of the mountains. Sorry if all you keep hearing is me breathing. <laughs> I might be dying, but at least I'm, I think I'm going to make it to Bigfoot, right? There's a pro and con to everything. Please let this be the right spot. I say that because someone online said, if you reach the spot where a bar, where you have to step over a bar, you know you're in the right spot. Let's lift the bike up and over. We're back to the creek. Oh, oh I see him up there. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna have to walk the bike through this part of the trail. Granted, the bike might be able to handle it, but... Do you see him up there? It's Bigfoot. Oh, shit. <laughs> That's a steep climb up there. Oh, well. well I'm going to put the phone away and I'll walk up there because I need both hands. That was, that was a pretty big hill, climbing up with the bike, but there's my friend Bigfoot. Let's get a view of the, the whole area. So that area. trail would take you further up into the mountains. Wouldn't have been so bad of a hill if I wasn't taking the bike with me and a hot weather day. And I think this is actually someone's yard. But the Bigfoot part is right here. Believe in yourself, even, even if nobody else does. Bigfoot. Hashtag Farmington Bigfoot. Hey, Bigfoot. <laughs> All 
All right, well, that probably ends the Farmington Adventures today. Thanks for everyone who's tuned in. Hope it gives you some idea of what's in Farmington, and hopefully in the coming days I can cover some more of the other cities in Utah, like Ogden, maybe a little more of Salt Lake City, and some other places. So a little bit of bonus footage on my way back. Now I'm at the that Lagoon Trail that I was showing earlier. See, you're right up against the park. One of the water rides. I would love to go on one of those right now. <laughs> cool down a little bit. The good thing about the trail on the way back is that since I was pedaling upward or walking upward the whole way there, uh, the way back was mostly downhill and uh, I guess pretty steep downhill. So I was able to coast. Not sure if we'll see much else of the park or if these trees will be blocking it. A little bit of the water in the boom. Oh, sprinkler! Hit me, please come back. Ah, uh, all right. <laughs> there we go. Who would have thought? Got my nice little cool down from a sprinkler system at Lagoon. Please do not feed the animals. I guess they have a little zoo area here in Lagoon. These people's backyards are right up against Lagoon. Let's see here. It looks like the sign says we've got a curve ahead of us. I probably should have stayed at that sprinkler for good couple minutes. Alright, I think this is the part of the trail that I didn't go on earlier. If you were watching this video all the way through, when I started on the Lagoon Trail, I came from the right side and I could have made a left to continue on the trail, but instead I went to the uh, the actual street. Yeah, so I came from this direction, and but I ended up going that way and showing Cafe Torino and the rest of the video. So, thanks for checking out the bonus footage. All right, bonus footage number two. I ate Blaze Pizza for lunch, sat in there for a while to cool down, and I'm trying to time up when the next Farmington train comes for the front runner. I figured I would show the footage of how to get to the front runner station that I described earlier. So it's just past Chick-fil-A. If you remember where I showed Nordstrom earlier, that's right here. So this train, to get to the train station, you have to go up those stairs and then go to the other side where the actual station is. Letting me go. And this is also a parking lot for people riding the transit. One 
cool thing about that is you probably can't tell from here, but there is a like a lagoon decoration on the actual train station. So let's see here. Is there an elevator? I think there is an elevator. That would make it easier than having to carry the bike all the way up. Also, if you wanted to go to Lagoon, there's a free shuttle right here. So you could go to the train station and take the free shuttle. So let's see if there's an elevator. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, so the, <clears throat> the elevator's prevented me from having to take the stairs. And then you just take the sky bridge across. Since this one's not going back and forth, I'll just carry it on down the steps. There's the bridge I just came over. The back of Farmington. I think there is a bike trail that goes back there, right along there. And then here's the Farmington station with the lagoon signage in the background.